Well, as thousands take to London's streets today to protest Israeli strikes on Gaza, many countries in Europe have banned pro-Palestinian protests. Should Britain follow suit? And when does protest become hateful incitement? Well, joining me now is political commentator Matthew Stadlin and former Brexit Party MEP Belinda De Lucy. Good afternoon to you both. Thanks for joining me to talk about this. Matthew, let's start with you. Where do you stand on this issue? Should Britain follow parts of Europe and ban these protests? I think we have to stand by freedom of speech. The idea of banning tens of thousands of people from protesting peacefully, if that's what they're going to do, doesn't sit easily with me at all. Having said that, any anti-Semitism whatsoever needs to be clamped down on very, very strongly by the police. What about this chanting that, that is causing great concern? I mean, do, do you think that is an issue? Do you think that is a potential crime? I just read the Metropolitan Police's statement that they issued on Twitter, and I think they, broadly speaking, got it right. They were very clear that anti-Semitism would not be accepted on this march. Arrests could be made, of course, and they don't have to be made at the march itself. There'll be strong surveillance, I would have hoped. This controversial phrase that we may hear being chanted, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, that is deeply problematic, because if it means the eradication of Israel, I would argue that's anti-Semitic. But at the moment, it seems the police will not clamp down on that particular chant. What about the concern that these protests could now be happening week after week as, uh, as this conflict deepens and therefore comes the risk to security, increasing risk to our security? My main concern is, and I'm Jewish myself, is for the Jewish communities of London that they are not in any way harassed or threatened. That, of course, would be an absolute disgrace. It's a hallmark of a civilised society that we're allowed to protest peacefully, but that mustn't spill into anything else. And I know there is deep concern amongst some Jewish people in this country. The government is right to do everything it can to reassure those Jewish British citizens. But at the same time, I don't, as I say, think you can stop tens of thousands of people marching, I hope the vast majority of whom will be marching in favour of peace and not in any way antagonistically. Belinda, let me bring you in. What is your take in this? Uh, people uh, marching in favour of peace, they're not pro-Hamas. I think um, it is very naive to imagine these protests aren't going to be infiltrated by Hamas sympathizers, anti-Semites, uh, radical Islamists. Um, they are going to be the sort of feeding ground for those types to turn up. And I've met many of those, uh, the likes of them, at places like Speaker's Corner over the years, they exist. And um, for me, it's about how are we making our British Jewish communities feel with these deeply insensitive, now very frequent, uh, massive protests that do include chants, that do include uh, people who have behaved outrageously, whether it's wearing massively offensive imagery of, of paragliders um, or chanting uh, with threatening slogans. Um, I think there should have been a time for mourning, at least out of respect, for the worst terrorist atrocity, the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. Um, I, I feel utterly sickened that we have submitted to this. I think before the very first protest happened, the government should have come out very clearly and said we are going to have a time of mourning, a time of reflection, um, and, and at least give uh, some respect to the Jewish community who've been deeply wounded by this and who are frightened. I have many Jewish friends who are now frightened to walk out into the streets when one of these protests happened to be going on. It's the fear it cre creates. It's the climate of, of fear for our vulnerable Jewish community at the moment. It's not acceptable. And I think shame on us we didn't come out stronger straight away and say, not on our streets, not so soon after a massacre. We protect our J British Jewish community first and foremost.
But we can see from the pictures that it is very peaceful. The people that you're talking about, the dissenters, they do seem to be very few and far between. And Palestinians, with what has happened to them down the decades, they have an absolutely legitimate right to protest, don't they? They absolutely do. I, I, I support the right to protest. I'm talking about the timing here. Uh, I feel the timing is is so wounding and so deeply offensive. Um, and Matthew, you can let me just, let me just ask you, I can it. see you shaking and, and your you say head that there. They're peaceful, Belinda, but, just hang on. Yeah. I saw Matthew shaking his head. I just want to bring, bring, um, bring you in on that. The, the timing of this is wrong. There should have been a period of mourning. I don't agree with that. And I, I'll tell you why I don't agree with that. The reason is because 1,400 Israelis, many of them civilians, were simply murdered by medieval savages who came through from Gaza. These are terrorists. Whatever the BBC wants to call them, they are terrorists. The truth is also that a Palestine Gaza is now facing an existential humanitarian crisis. Untold numbers of children have died in Gaza. We are seeing people risking starvation, risking dying of thirst as a consequence of the blockade and of the bombing. So there are two things that are going on at once. One is the utter unspeakable atrocities committed by Hamas terrorists in Israel. And the other is the ferocity of Israel's response. I believe Israel does have a right to defend itself. But proportionality is a key word here. Not everyone can agree on what that means in this context. For me, it has to involve Israel obeying international law and there are serious question marks at the moment as to whether they have or not. So in that context, I understand why people are marching for the Palestinians. I just hope that some of those marchers will also bear banners demanding the release by Hamas of Israeli hostages. And I'm not holding my breath. I mean, what what is a huge problem, Matthew, is we, we keep seeing, which I find so insensitive is the people that have been tearing down the posters of those missing hostages. I find that utterly appalling. They're human beings, aren't they? I find that sickening. I find it absolutely sickening. I want to be completely, I want to be completely clear here. What Hamas did in Israel and anyone who supports that sickens me to the pits of my stomach. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't protect our freedoms in Britain which include the right to protest peacefully. Belinda, as we keep seeing Can the I, images... No. Uh, go on then, yeah, go on. I was going to say, I'm, I'm really sorry, but there is a hugely intimidating factor to these protests for our Jewish community. Um, as has been reported, there are two going on at the same time. One, very controversial. Um, can you imagine what it must be like for um, London, British... Jews to, to sort of have to say to their children, you can't go out today. Sorry, you can't go down to the shops. You can't go near Marble Arch. You can't go all because of these protests. It wouldn't be happening if there were pro-Israel protests. They seem to be much more peaceful and seem to be... But, but, but Linda, we're the looking at the pictures the now. Anger. They are peaceful. We're not seeing but, lots but of do violence. You see any Israel but that is because I think um, Jewish people have had to stay at home today. I think it's because... Uh, have you noticed there are no Israeli flags? There's, as you said, no calls to help the hostages, some of which are British. Um, there's, there's none of that around, no placards around for that kind of balanced peace. It is, I think it is uh, intimidating whether they are uh, peaceful or not. The frequency and timing of these mass protests are intimidating for, I believe, London British Jews, or certainly many of them, and my, my friends included. Matthew, is it, is it intimidating? I think the reason this conversation that we're having at the moment is so worthwhile on GB News is precisely because there are contesting interests here. I agree with Belinda that some Jewish people in London, no doubt amongst my friends, do feel intimidated and scared today. And that is deeply regrettable. And that is why I call on the police to make absolutely sure that any hint of anti-Semitism is clamped down on, whether immediately at the march or as a consequence of surveillance that the police are conducting during today. At the same time, I reiterate, we have very precious freedoms in this country, and I believe that people have the right to protest freely and also peacefully. 
OK, you have both made your opinions very clear. Really appreciate your contributions this afternoon. Matthew Stadlin and Belinda DeLucy, thank you both for talking to me and debating on GB News Saturday.